Hello everyone! Thermal imaging is so fascinating. We can see things in total darkness. It operates primarily in the long wave infrared uh, portion of the spectrum and um, as opposed to uh, near infrared and short wave where scattering predominates here it's really the emissions due to temperature. The military has been using thermal sensors for decades to gain that uh, advantage on the battlefield. But there are commercial products available, like these uh, super cool sensors. Notice in the top left the resolution improvement. Uh, generally these um, consumer products have lower resolution, but um, I bought one of the highest uh, resolution thermal imagers, the Helion from Pulsar, and I love it. Notice the resolution, 640 by 480, and uh, it has less than 25 millikelvin uh, sensitivity, which is awesome. It retails right now for around $4,000. Now, if you want more resolution, you're going to pay a big price. This camera is $50,000. Oh, my God. I think I would rather buy a Tesla Model Y. <laughs> really love those cars. Let's have a look at some color versus black and white images. So this is actually in Antelope Valley by the aqueduct. I went over there to film. And it's obviously fake color. All these thermal imagers have a color palette. Now this is black and white. Total darkness, moonless night. I was driving through the desert and the dark hills, those are actually dunes, the Dumont dunes. Sand is cooler. Now this is uh, looking down on Las Vegas from the mountains. You can barely see the stratosphere on the right. This video clip was taken during the day and the dynamic range is actually pretty decent, but at night it's actually much better. So what are some non-military applications? Well, one is kind of related. <laughs> Hunters have been using it to uh, get rid of uh, these uh, pests, as they call them. It's really sad to see. I don't condone it. But uh, here's a practical thing. You can see the nails in the walls and the studs. This is in my house. There's my cell phone. So cool. Now watch this. This is really trippy. You can put your... That's me right there. I'm putting my hand on the cold wall and it leaves an um, imprint of my hand. And I guess law enforcement... Uh, can track down suspects. A sheriff deputy was telling me they're using these things to track suspects at night. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. These uh, thermal imprints can persist for minutes. Um, even after half an hour, you can still tell there was something there, which is quite fascinating. Now, here I, I'm filming in, the, in a mirror. I was curious if it works, but uh, notice my hands, I touch the cold part of the tripod and it leaves a cool layer on my skin, which shows up black as ink. Isn't that fascinating? Now, here's how we did in Malibu, California. I took it out on a fairly clear day and this is looking from um, that park by Pepperdine out towards LA in the distance. Look at that. And here I'm changing the color palette and uh, yeah there were some clouds and haze on the horizon but I could not see Mount San Jacinto. Um, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, Shortwave infrared and near infrared seems to do better. It's also a matter of dynamic range. The sensors are improving constantly, but um, yeah, you could barely see something in the distance. You could definitely here see the temperature of the uh, atmosphere, right, from the sea surface going up. And okay, and on the horizon, you can see Palos Verde. There it is. But yeah, it wasn't, it was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, here, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, that's the edge of Palos Verde there on the left. 
And so, so this was during daytime. But this technology, I think, does better at night. And that's really because there is more, I guess, contrast. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's neat. Now I can do flat earth research even at, um, at night, you know. I don't depend on the sun to illuminate. So, um, yeah, pretty neat. But I've turned this camera towards the skies, and this is how it performed against the moon. So here you see uh, it was a full moon. Uh, this past, I don't know, week or so, two weeks. And there it is. I've sped up the clip here. But look at that. I started wondering, what am I seeing there? Does it have an atmosphere? That really fascinated me. And there is a structure in the moon. And uh, I, uh, I'll show you something in a little bit. Now, this is um, uh, not quite a full moon different phase of the moon and look at that whoa what is that <laughs> you can see ufos too so fascinating i wish i had a better lens now i took that image and put it to registax and this is what i got isn't that incredible is that faint blue halo around it, the atmosphere it's very intriguing here's the full picture with the structure inside wow wonder what's going on in there there's a few research papers out there that have similar images and uh, in the center is one taken during an eclipse I read the article fascinating here's my photo uh, compared to theirs and uh, I think I did pretty good anyway thanks for watching folks don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video God bless you all